expects to make New York in close to seven hours. Boy, I wish you'd take my mother-in-law. Here he comes now. Hi, boy. Mr. Farrell, how much time do you expect to clip off the record? After he maps and he builds them, I just fly them. Well, I don't like to brag about my baby boys, but I predict the special will crack every record between Los Angeles and New York. Yeah, if your baby will carry the load. Oh, singing the blues again, huh? I still say that porter won't carry me in a half a ton of fuel. Well, I don't know how much fat you put on lately, Brad, but my designers tell me. Ten bucks says she don't. It's a bet. Hey, what's holding us up around here? It's Squid Watkins back there making with his mumbo jumbo. Oh, what is it this time, Squid? Old shoes or gilded wishbone? Just trying to bring you luck, that's all. Yeah, well, for 12 years you've been loading my ship with good luck, John. Someday I'm going to get killed on one of them. I'll tell you, airplanes ain't safe, Brad. When you're leaving terra firma, you're defying the law of gratitude. And when you defy gratitude... Oh, skip it, skip it. You've got my cockpit so loaded with rabbit's feet now, I don't know which way I'm going. I hung up on them lucky dolls, too. One I saved from the last two crack-ups. Oh, you did? Yeah. How about it, you two lovebirds? Okay, Matt. So long, beautiful. Uh, hey, Brad. When you get over to Nebraska, kind of drop that off, will you? It'll save me postage. I wasn't the best mechanic in the world, I'd... Good thing there wasn't a horse on there. Airplanes ain't safe. as good as broke. They won't have to shoot me. <laughs> I was in the hospital once. I had intentional flu. Hey, cut that out. That candy belongs to an invalid. Oh, excuse me. I thought it was yours. Take Squid out and buy him some ice cream, son. We want to talk to Uncle Brad. Oh, I'm on a diet. Give me bananas. <laughs> I want to fly, Squid. You promised me. You promised you'd let me fly solo. Oh, you're not good enough yet to fly solo. Sure I am. My dad's the greatest fly in the world, and it's in my blood. Ain't that right, Mom? Yes, I, I'm afraid you're right, sonny. See? Come on, Squid. Okay. Get in the cockpit. What do you do now? Go into your dance? No, I'm a low wing job. <laughs> it looks like you're going into a tailspin. Contact. Start your motor. Hey, that motor's only running on one tonsil. Don't forget to adjust your safety belt. I'll fly you nonstop to the end of the hall and back. Retractable wings. I doubt if you'll ever get that extra fuel load off the ground. Here we go. Let's have one of this Zuma takeoff. Yeah! Ooh. Sorry, boss. You should have used the other runway. <laughs> <laughs> that mush brain maniac. Did you ring? No. If that squid had one more brain, he'd be a half-wit. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Betty. Hello. Well, what do you think of Superman here? Can't even get a ship off the ground. What do you mean? Didn't I tell you... All right, all right. You win your bet. My designers were wrong. Oh, so your designers were wrong, and I wind up almost breaking my neck. Well, you're a test pilot, aren't you? <laughs> I 
I ought to wrap that cast right around your neck. It's the same with all of us, Brad. We've all taken our chances. You mean it was the same. In the good old days when we flew with the big six, we had a little fun out of it. Now it's a race with a crash wagon to try and make a living. Why don't you get out of it, Brad? Get out of it? For good, I mean. Are you kidding? Why don't Johnny get out? He will soon. Every cent he makes testing, he's putting into his plastic plane. I hope it works out. It's gonna work. As soon as my ship's finished, no more testing for Johnny Coles. No more chills for Betty. Brad, you know the trouble with you is you're just a glory-hunting kid at heart. You're crazy. Am I? You could have quit when I did. But, oh, no, you want to go on head shopping down Main Street, giving the yokels a thrill, spending your prize money trying to drink the town dry and partying gals you never saw again. Yeah, well, a guy's got to have some fun, doesn't he? Aviation's grown into a business, Brad, but you just haven't grown up with it. Oh, I forgot. Here's something came to the plant for you. Oh, it's from Doug. Yeah, aviation's a business, all right. A business that snuffs you out or retires you at the age of 35 under some stooge that doesn't know a nail around from a hole in the ground. You haven't learned a thing, Brad. Oh, yes, I have. One thing. To keep this kid out of flying, there's gonna be one feral get his out of this game without risking his neck. What's Doug got to say? Well, he's due out next month with a nice new shiny diploma in aeronautical engineering. That's swell. You know, every crate I've tested has been just that much more insurance to keep Doug out of the air. Hey, get a load of the kid. Hey, you better keep your women locked up when he's around. <laughs> you telling me. And listen, you old high binder, I want to talk to you about him. Well, for heaven's sake, what happened? A crack up, Mom. <laughs> Airplanes just ain't safe, even when I'm the airplane. This new engine will deliver a hundred more horsepower. That ought to carry the load. <laughs> what does that guy think he is, a crop duster? <laughs> Take it easy, Brad. That leg is in no shape for arguments yet. Oh, yeah? Listen, you muttonhead, what's the big idea? Surprise. <laughs> Doug. Hey, I thought you said he couldn't fly. Well, these ain't water wings. How are you, Brad? You're looking great. Hey, what are you doing in this ship? A fella bought her in the east. I just buried her out for him. You knew perfectly well how I felt about your flying. Didn't think you'd mind, Brad. Here I am sending you dough to go to engineering school. And you use it to learn to fly. I took my engineering course. I learned to fly through the Civil Aeronautics Authority. It didn't cost me a dime. But you did the one thing I didn't want you to do. Ah, cool off, Brad. Yeah, it makes you cook inside. Hi, McMasters. How are you? I didn't think Brad would boil over like this. Why do you think I've been talking all these years? Well, look, I appreciate everything you've done for me, Brad, but I want to fly, and I don't see any reason why I can't. All right, you're a flyer. So you're on your own. What a homecoming. <laughs> well, I guess I'd better pick up my marbles. Now, wait a minute, son. Don't you go off half cock. Hey, Squid. Yeah? Take Doug over to your place. Go on, go on. Sure. Brad! Save it, save it. You've got about as much head on you as a stale glass of beer. Come on in the office. How do you like the joint? Huh? Oh, it's all right. Yeah, well, why don't you start unpacking then? What for? Oh, you think Brad don't want you, huh? You got a cigarette? Oh, I got one. Hey, you wait here. I want to show you something. I got a collection of four-leaf clovers. The luckiest thing in the world. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 oh. Ow. <laughs> Woo. What a crash. <laughs> you hurt yourself? No, what did you do? <laughs> I just scratched myself. Oh, up. hey, hey, don't take that altitude. Safety voice. I said, wait till I get some Macuracle. 
Hey, Sit down. It's nothing at all. Yeah, but I gotta fix that confection. It's not worth bothering him about. Oh, yes, yeah, says you. I had a friend one time named Stinky Cornfeller. One morning, he stuck his finger with a pin, and what do you think happened? That night at 6 o'clock, he was out cold in his coffin. Now, what happened? Blood poison? No, he was hit with a truck. You can't be too careful with these things, you know, the germs and everything set in. Hey, uh, you know, I'd like to stay here, Squid. Uh, Brad's always been tough, but the way things turned out, it... Oh, you got the guy all wrong. He was just surprised, that's all. Well, he loves you like a brother. He always says that... Hey, Squid, what are you hanging around for? Oh, uh, I was just hanging around. Yeah, well, Mac told you to bring him over, not take the day off. Oh, well, look, I, I was just leaving. Well, I guess I better roll my hook. Oh, come on, kid, don't be a chump. Yeah, but you said that... Oh, I know, I know, I lost my head, but uh, Squid can move in there and you can bunk here. Say, I smooshed Mac into giving you a swell job. Oh, that's what I always wanted, to work with you and Mac. Well, you got your wish. <laughs> of course, I don't expect to do your kind of flying right off the bat. Hey, wait a minute. You're going to fly a drafting board. A what? Yeah, you're starting in the designing room. Mac's giving you a swell chance. Yeah, there's the draftsman, huh? Oh, I know how you feel, kid. You're just itching to get up there and fly by the seat of your pants and get in the headlines. Yeah, maybe I am. Yeah, well, I've had all that. When the glory's gone, all you've got left is nerves and hangover and no future. But the first toy I ever had was a model plane you made for me. I learned to read from a clipping book telling me about the stunts that you and the Big Six pulled. I used to tell the kids at school that I'd fly with you and Mac and Johnny Coles and Whispering Bill Thompson and... You come over here. There's Whispering Bill, one of the greatest flyers I ever knew. So what? Washed out in a the tailspin. There's Ace Broxton, number two to go. If he'd have been just six inches higher, he would have missed those telegraph wires. And there's Red Carrington, stacked into the side of a mountain, carrying serum for a publicity stunt. He was number three of the big six. But they were pioneers. Ships are better now. Sure, they helped pave the way, and so did I. And the only way I can get out is to take the way they did. A guy's got to take chances. But a man doesn't have to fly. He can take the lessons those fellas taught to build ships, safer ships, so we won't have any more Red Carringtons or Whispering Bills. OK, Brad. Out again. That's the boy. You know, Doug, I promised Mom I'd look after you. I wouldn't be keeping my promise very well if I let you be the fourth helmet up on that wall. Come on, let's get unpacked. Brad Farrell. Brad Farrell? Oh, he's in the pilot house. The pilot house? Yeah. You see that little building right over there? Well, that isn't it. Uh, we just had the pilot house painted, and the painter said well, it was going to put wallpaper in, and we said no. Painted because it... I beg your pardon. I just want to find Brad Farrell. Oh, Brad Farrell. Well, he's in the pilot house. You see that little building over there? That still isn't it. When you get there, you turn to the... No, you better turn to the left. You go right around the corner, and if he isn't in the pilot house, um, he's asleep. But, uh... Thank you very much. Bill Tate. Wallace Galoot on the field. Say, I don't want to miss this. Oh! Why don't you watch where you're going? I, I'm sorry. I, I'm awfully sorry. You make a habit of knocking people down? You just specialize on women. <laughs> well, I, I didn't knock you down because I wanted to. Oh, a psychopathic case. The urge was just too strong to resist. <laughs> so I, I'm still sorry. Uh, can I help you with anything? No. Give me my thing. Would you please tell me where Mr. Farrell is? Mr. Well, that's me. You? Yeah. Oh. Well, if somebody had to knock me down, I'm awfully glad it was you. Huh? I mean, you're the man I came to see. Me? 
Yes, I'm Carol Blake. Yeah, well, how do you do? What did you want to see me about? My father's Professor Blake. He taught aerodynamics at Southwest Tech. Perhaps you've heard of him? No, I don't believe so. Well, Bill Terry at Municipal Airport suggested I see you. Bill Terry? Huh? Yeah. Well, thanks to Bill. I've been reading about the famous Brad Farrell for years. You know, I thought you'd be a little older. Uh, you did, huh? Well, I'm the type that ages gracefully. <laughs> really, I wanted to see Mr. McMaster. But Mr. Terry said I'd have a better chance if I could see you first about the plane. Yeah, about the plane, huh? Yes. My father designed a plastic ship. And it's so revolutionary, he's having trouble interesting the manufacturers. <laughs> so you decided that maybe you could interest them, is that it? Well, sort of. If you'd look over these designs, I know you could influence Mr. McMaster. You who Farrell! How about it? Hey, uh, look, I'm holding up a, a big conference in there, but uh, if we could get together tonight, you know? Good. Then I could explain the whole thing to you. Yeah. Well, I knock off about six, so how about meeting me for dinner over there at the Flyers' Roost, say, around seven? Oh, I'd love that. So I'll see you about seven, Mr. Farrell. Yeah. I do hope I can interest you. I'm sure you can. Goodbye. This must be the end of the line. Huh? The music stopped. <laughs> I'm sorry. For a man who's just getting over a broken leg, you dance very well, Mr. Farrell. Hey, that's not much of a compliment, young lady. <laughs> oh, Squid, you're getting clumsier. Huh? He uh, said he was going to see a professor. I get such a kick out of this place. Just like being part of the game. Oh, no wonder he gave us the brush. If you'd had a professor like that, you would have got out of the fifth grade. Don't be silly, I'd have still been in it. <laughs> You're the first test pilot I ever met. I must admit, I was kind of worried. A business appointment, he said. Because you see... <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. The coffee is awful stuffy. Uh, I mean, the room's burned my tongue. If we could get out on the balcony, huh? I haven't even started my ice cream. Uh, the ice cream's awful. I should have told you that before. It's really terrible. But I like it. Oh, what I wouldn't give for a four-alarm fire. Oh, Douglas, my lad. The professor? Uh, the professor's daughter, a couple of the boys. <laughs> well, I'll see you tomorrow, huh? Well, aren't you going to introduce us? Uh, this is Squid. My name is Brad Farrell. How do you do? Who? Brad Farrell. But you said you were Brad Farrell. Uh, uh, look, uh, I, I can explain this. Never mind. I, I'm Doug Farrelly's brother. I had every intention of telling you. I can understand your intention. Very funny. The joke's over. Oh, now, wait a minute. You're well, giving her a line, huh? I, I was not. It was strictly business. Business, Douglas? Yes, business. She said she wanted to see you about something, so... I just thought I could save you a lot of time and bother and find out myself. You can take me home. Oh, now, children, I'm sorry if I opened this big mouth of mine and put my foot in it. It's not important. Oh, but it is important. Um, what was it you wanted to see me about? It was about my father's plane. But you wouldn't want to listen anyway. Oh, but I would. I'd love it. Come on, let's dance. I listen better on my feet anyway. Douglas, put a nickel in the jukebox, will you? Right this way. <laughs> Doug's a great fellow. I bet he swept you right off your feet. He certainly did. <laughs> I'm
wanted to talk to you about. I was telling you. I'm trying to get a girl who helped her father. Oh, that's what I always like a girl who helped her father. I didn't hear you. Never mind. This is no place to discuss business. I can see that. That's a fact. <laughs> no, I was doing all right till you mothers came along. Ah, uh, dames is poison. They're just like airplanes. You never know when they're going to put you in a spin. I had a gal just like that once, and I was doing all right, too. All of a sudden, out of the clear blue, a guy comes along and takes her right out from under my nose. A pilot? No, her husband. Hey, did you bring any cookies? Hey, Doc, drop another nickel, will ya? Here's a slug I've been saving. There I was, 5,000 feet in the air. Nothing but jungle under me. Right then and there, my motor quit on me. Well, there was no place to put her down. Then all of a sudden, I looked over to my right, and I saw a little spot just about, just about as big as a handkerchief. But you made the landing. No, it was a handkerchief. Well, have a nice flight, Miss Blake. Thanks, Squid. You sure been keeping Brad up in the air. <laughs> Squid's about as subtle as the punch in the nose. <laughs> Thanks, boss. He always used to say that babes and planes wouldn't mix, you know, like Earl and Bittaker. Oh, is that so? <laughs> you ought to get a zipper for that yap of yours. Oh, did I say something funny? Not in years. Well, that's one thing about airplanes. They can't get out and walk back. great flying around like this, isn't it? Do you really think women in planes shouldn't mix? Nah, you ought to take off at dawn and see a sunrise from this roost. Look, tomorrow we'll... Uh... Not tomorrow. No? Uh -uh. You're supposed to meet my father tomorrow, remember? Oh, yeah, I was gonna tell you about that, but, but I... But uh... something came up. <laughs> what yeah. do I have to do? Qualify for a pilot's license before you'll talk to Dad about his plane? Oh, you think I'm not interested, huh? Well, are you? After all, I've dined with you, I've danced with you, flown with you. Good company, aren't I? I have no complaints about your company. You're charming. And pretty, too. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and laugh it off. But either you see Dad tomorrow, or this is the end of a very beautiful... Oh, don't say that. Because I have something very special planned for you. I'm not interested. Okay. What is it? Oh, just the usual Friday get-together of the pilots, the flyers' roost, that's all. Of course, if you're not interested, why, Just uh... a moment. I've changed my mind. Good. Then you'll go, huh? Well, I'll pick you up at eight. No, don't bother to pick me up. I've something to do. I'll see you later at the roost. Okay. Good night. Yeah. We did okay up there, didn't we? Yes, we did. Jerk. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> How's the Brad Farrell campaign coming along? The what? That blitzkrieg that he the other night. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I must have thought about it. Uh, well, it just seemed the easiest way to get a date with a beautiful girl, that's all. After that, what can I say? 
Suppose we start all over again. From the beginning. <laughs> yes. Now, uh, what about that brother of mine? Oh, he's a hard nut to crack. Yeah, don't I know it. And yeah, maybe, maybe little brother can help. Would you? Oh, we're pals, aren't we? Mister, you've just joined a conspiracy. Well, two little lovebirds. Hiya, Brad. You two keep that up and you'll have to get married. Well, won't you join us? No. You see the most beautiful girl in the world sitting around waiting. I mean, she's waiting for her. Mm, one of those. Huh? Yeah. How's little Brad? Oh, he's wonderful. Hey, uh, when are we going to bust a bottle over that ship of yours? Oh, pretty soon now. Pretty soon. Swell. Well, let me know, will you? Honey, why didn't you tell him how well the ship has been flying the test? Let's wait till it finished. Have a drink, Brad. Thank you, darling. Well, well, fancy meeting you here. You're a small world, isn't it? Uh, Brad, I'd like you to be my father. How do you do? How are you, Mr. Farrell? Uh, Professor Blake has been explaining his geodetic design to me, Brad. I think he's got something. This is rather an odd place to hold a conference, but my daughter said you wanted it here. My daughter's a very clever girl. Thank you very much, Mr. Farrell. Shall we order? By all means. Douglas has explained it very well, Mr. Farrell. But one more thing. This basket weave construction is not only more resilient, but if any one of the sections is damaged, the rest of the plane will hold together. What I don't understand is why you don't have to brace the empennage. We make use of the cantilever principle. Perhaps if you'd sketch the tail surfaces, Carol. Pencil? I hope they don't mind my doing this. Oh, don't be silly. That tablecloth will make it. These people of their age will have better sense than to be right on the tablecloth. The natural brand, especially with the Army eager for a cheap light trainer right now. Hi. Right. Hello? Oh, yes. That landing gear fitting's okay now. Shall I lock up? You ain't gonna fly her tonight. I said warm her up. That was Bob. I've got to run over to the hangar. Oh, Johnny, you were going to forget all about that ship tonight. The government test at 8 in the morning. Things have got to move like clockwork. or will walk right out on me. They're busy these days. Mm, you're not going to take it up, are you? No. I'm just going to take a quick look. Here you go, baby. Sip the cocktail. I'll be back before you get the op. The masters don't think that plastic planes are safe. You wouldn't even go for that plastic job with Johnny Cole. Douglas explained about Mr. Cole's plane, an entirely different design. Hmm. Won't fly anyhow. You were grand, Doug. Anything for a pal. You certainly made it a lot easier for my father. Why didn't you tell us about it? His blindness. Oh, he wouldn't want me to do that. I understand. I wonder. It's more than just a plane to him. It's the one thing that keeps him from feeling like he's a useless, blind old man. Got the enthusiasm of a kid. Oh, tonight, yes. If you'd seen him three years ago after the accident. How did it happen? Chemistry experiment. Oh, what a terrible break. One flash. He lost everything he lived for. He was hopeless. Then I remember this design he'd been toying with. At first he thought it was futile. Then gradually he began to realize that he might be of some use again. Must have been heartbreaking for you. Oh, he worked hard. First he hired a draftsman, and a cabinet maker assembled the model. This master's has to accept that design, but... Did you hear Dad tonight when he said, when the plane's accepted by the government? Oh, Doug, we can't let him down. No, we won't. 
I know how it is to have your dreams kicked around. You, Doug. Remember when I pretended that I was Brad? Well, part of that was you, but there was something else. I was borrowing his glory and parading around in it like a kid in a cowboy suit. No, I don't understand. Ever since I've been about that high, I wanted to get up there and put the clouds around. Well, if you wanted to fly, why didn't you? If I were a man, I'd... I don't know. There, there are a lot of reasons. Come under the heading of promises and loyalty, gratitude. Why should I bother you with that stuff? Maybe it's, maybe it's because you're such a swell guy. You're a pretty swell guy yourself. I've been wanting to do that since the first time I bumped into you. It was the second time they got me. <laughs> I think we'd better go inside. All right, why don't they bring their own paper? Well, I see you've made a lot of progress, Brad. By this time, I thought you'd be flying the plane. I'll give it a little more study. Can I help you with anything? Yeah, get me another tablecloth, will you? Yes, sir. Do that again, will you? Get a load of Johnny's new plane now. Yes. What do you mean? He's flying it. Oh boy, I've got to see this. It's that plastic job I was telling you about, Professor. Dad, would you mind? No, go right ahead. There she is. Well, your 
passing up a great bet. Brad, you're crazy trying to sell me on a plastic ship after what happened to Johnny. But, Mac, this is different. Oh, come on. Finish dressing, will you? I'm starved. Look, Johnny's was a veneer job. This is a geodetic. Do me a favor, will you? Take this pretty little basket and pull it full of Easter eggs. Yeah, and you're the guy that's always telling me to get out of testing. Now I've got a chance. Why don't you give it to me? How? Oh. Look, I get three grand for testing the special, don't I? Yeah. Two more if I break the record to New York. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll put the whole thing in if you'll build the Blake plane. Oh, Brad, if you've fallen for this gal, why use me for a come on? What's the matter? Won't she marry you without premium? What, make another Betty Coles out of her? No, sir, not till these geodetics are coming off the line and I can plop my feet up on the desk. Then I'll ask her to marry me. Well, I hate to kick little Cupid in the pants, but I'm just not sold on plastic planes. Well, after all, we did learn a little about uh, plastic from Johnny's crack up. I thought if we could put this plane over, we might cut little Brad and Betty in. We do owe Johnny something. Yeah, I guess we do it. Uh, you know, I'm a sentimental slob. You mean you'll do it, Mac? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, gee, that's well. We'll put Doug on it, and by the time the special's ready for the speed trials, he'll have one almost finished. Come on, let's tell Carol about it. Now, wait a minute, Jocko. I'm running the plan. I know, but let's tell her anyway. Come uh, on. Douglas Farrell is in charge of construction on the Blake Geodetic. The Army is interested in this plane as a primary trainer if the ship is ready for test within 30 days. Daniel McMasters. I wish I had a brother. <laughs> There's your plane. What do I fly her? Be careful, you break it. She isn't quite ready to fly yet. Someday she'll pay off plenty of coffee and cakes for you and Mom. Oh, gee, Brad, I, I don't know what we would have done without you. Yeah. You like it, huh? Yes, sir. Be sharp, I think. <laughs> Do you think these rudder cables are heavy enough? They'll take 4,000 pounds. That ought to be enough. Hey, Brad, Doug. Talk Doug. about your bottleneck. Uh, what's the matter? You'll have to leave for Washington the first thing in the morning, Judge. I can't. I got all this work piled up. If you don't go, there won't be any ship to test in two weeks. What do they want? CAA needs a formula for stress analysis immediately. Well, haven't they got that here? Not on geodetic. You better get some rest. Incidentally, you're doing a swell job, Doug. Yeah. Hey, Squid. Hey. What's the evening? He might not be back. You know, Monday when you make the speed hop. And if he ain't, it won't be good luck. That's right, Doug. I'd like to have you back to see me take off. Yeah, I'll wind it up as fast as possible. Oh, you got to be back with the speed hop. Hey. I had a dream. What about? Oh, she was a pip. Oh, look who... You're not going to pick up any blonde hitchhikers. Well, you never can tell what you're going to run into in those clouds over Pittsburgh. <laughs> Let's go. Gee, I wish Doug were back. He'll be in some time today from his wire. He did okay in Washington. Good. Well, hello. Hello. Uh, I just drove Betty and Brad over. Good. Can I say hello to Broadway for you? You might bring me one of those nice shiny stars that hang over the Statue of Liberty. That shiny star is as good as yours. I'll say good luck now, Brad. You know how I feel about those takeoffs. Bye, honey. 
I want to see the takeoff. Well, you come along with me, pal. Are you the daredevil flyer? I ain't the flyer, but I could be a daredevil. <laughs> what are you doing? Warming her up. <laughs> hey, I used to be a sailor. Do you like canoes? Uh-huh. Well, maybe I can get away in about an hour. I like canoeing. Yeah? Where can I get a hold of you? You might try Mercury 8436. Mercury 83... What? Mercury 8436. <laughs> That's right. And he's leaving now. <laughs> I'll get a red canoe. Gee, I wish I could go with you, Uncle Brad. I wish you could, too, but you've got to stay here and look after things. Be sure and take good care of Mom, won't you? Hey, Farrell, how about a shot? Sure. One with Miss Blake. You know, kissing her for luck. <laughs> okay, boss. Do you mind? No, of course not. <laughs> That's got it. Let's go, Brad. Better lift this time. So long, Mac. Happy landing. Thanks. Bye, boy. Can I have the day off? Sure, Squid. Go ahead. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I've got a date with a vision. Oh, what's the matter? Go ahead. Oh, I'm sick. Our phone number, it's on the wing. Going to New York. minutes ahead of schedule. Fall like the Farrell, feeling unlimited. Benefield after streaking across America faster than any human being ever flew the distance. Time, seven hours, 18 minutes. And here is a surprise. Farrell just announced that after a sandwich and a cup of coffee, he would take off westward in an attempt to establish a new round trip mark. He did it. I knew he'd do it. Yeah, he's a great flyer. Get my message that I'd pick her up. She didn't say it, Douglas. 
Brad dropped by about a half an hour ago, and they left. Thanks. Well, here's to Lady Luck. May she stay with us till our planes are flying. We don't need any luck, Brad. Father has enough faith for both of us. To a great flight. Thanks, honey. Did you remember that nice new shiny star you were going to bring me? Oh, gee, honey, I was going so doggone fast, I didn't have time to reach up and get it for you. Here I was counting on wearing it all this time. I'm going to put it in my hair right here. Sure, and that twinkle in your eye would give that poor little star an inferiority complex. But I did bring something. For me? Yeah. I've been lugging it around for a long time, and I, I kind of thought I'd hang on to it until the geodetics were coming off the line, and I was grounded for good. been about since I met you. I don't know what to say. Just say you'll marry me, Carol. Eh? Brad, I like you so very much. You've been so fine about everything. But it's Doug. I guess I should have known if I hadn't been flying blind. We should have told you. I guess we've all been waiting for that play. I'm sorry, Brad. Well, I, I've had forced landings before, and as long as it couldn't be me, I'm glad it was Doug. Hiya, Lightning. Gosh, if I'd known that moniker was going to stick with me, I'd have punched that newspaper guy in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Say, what do you mean keeping the hero to yourself? Come on, Lightning. You're a great excuse for a big night, and I got to have an excuse. Come on. <laughs> Here we go. I'm Call it be. Step up, everybody. A toast to the greatest flyer that ever... What a pretty scene. Oh, hello, Doug. Come on, get in on us, pal. Let me congratulate my brother. It was marvelous, wonderful. Don't congratulate me. Congratulate McMaster. Oh, not your flying. I'm congratulating you on a much-needed trip. Much-needed for promoting my girl. That's what you ought to take the bell for. Yeah. Sure, he waited till I got out of town and then just moved in. You keep me on the ground for my own good. Yeah. So you can go on being the super test pilot. Only one pharaoh can be a big shot, huh? Doug, we'll discuss it somewhere else. I'm through discussing. You stick me in a corner designing a ship while you go on glory hunting and making passes at my girl. Doug, you've made a mistake about the whole thing. Oh, no, I haven't. It was only about you that I made the mistake. Using me and him and everybody else to promote the plane. Why, oh, Doug, you're crazy. No! Take care of him, Jackson, until he comes to, will you? Okay, Lightning. I think we better get out of here. But no babe is worth it. You can get another girl, but where are you going to get another brother? Oh, well, it's not only her, it's a whole blasted setup. Brad ain't going to like this. Well, that's too bad. You shouldn't go away mad. You owe Brad money. I owe him nothing. When he knifed me with Carol, he settled the whole account. So long, Squid. Good luck, fella. Why didn't Adam and Eve let well enough alone? You can't run out on us now. Going, Mac, I can't stay here. But think of the people that are depending on you. You arranged those gadget tests for the Army. Who am I going to get to supervise them at this late date? I'm leaving, Mac. Ah, so you're going to run away like a spanked puppy. I'm going to Randolph Field and try to get a commission. Well, you're going to have to try awful hard, young fella, because the Army doesn't like quitters. There's me right for getting mixed up with this thing in the first place. We've been so busy with wood and cloth and blueprints, we haven't had time to speak of other things. I had to be alone with our plane. 
I think you know what it means to me. You're young. You'll build other places. But for me, there'll be no more after this one. And when we test our ship for the army, an old man will feel that living in darkness for three years has not been futile. Thousands of young pilots will be trained in our ships. Not to invade, but as a defense wall around our country. And it's a great country, Douglas, where a blind man can help build that wall. Monday, when we show how our ship can fly, that will be our moment, Douglas. Yours and mine. You're using a lot of funny thingamajigs. I never seen no test flight with them. Listen, Sonny, I told you before, go chase yourself. The Army's running this show. Oh. Go chase yourself? Oh, yeah, I remember. Things are getting unsafer and unsafer. Well, we're about ready to go, Colonel. Where's your test pilot? Well, he's due at 8.30. He ought to be here any minute. How's the radio? Just checking. He's into trainer. Testing. One, two, three, four. Testing. One, two, three, four. Clear as a bell. It's okay, Doug. Fine. Did Doug talk to you? Not a word. Me neither. Don't worry, it'll work out somehow. Let's go. Hey, Sergeant. What is all this junk? You'll have to ask Colonel Ryan. Mac. You don't expect me to fly this test with all this bric-a-brac, do you? Yeah, it looks that way, Brad. Your brother worked out a new automatic flight test system. Yeah, but I don't need all this junk. Yeah, I think you do. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah. Boy, I've been flying tests for 10 years, and I... Look, Mr. Farrell, this is 1941. It's time test pilots stop taking up experimental jobs and bang them around just to see if they'll crack up. Well, if it does crack up, it's no good anyhow. So what? Well, the ought to know why ships do what they do. They want scientific proof. Yeah, and that claptrap will give it to them, huh? Those instruments will make a record of everything that happens to the ship. If you had taken the time to come around and ask me, I would have been glad to explain it to you. Oh, I see. You expect me to play those keys like a typewriter with one hand and fly the test for the others, that it? No, no, I play them. You play them. I've been assigned as flight engineer on this test. <laughs> Mac, hear the guff he's giving me, will you? Yeah, yeah. The Army wants it that way, Brad. We approved final plans for the automatic recording test yesterday. Your brother is in full charge. But, Colonel, this man has never flown a test in his life. Well, I'm flying one now. Oh, I get it. Little Junior finally found out a way to mop up on the glory he's been yapping about, huh? You think because you can land one of those power gliders, you can fly a test, is that it? Yeah, that's right. Well, let me straighten you out on one little thing. You know, circling a field in one of those little puddle jumpers is an entirely different thing than coming out of a 9G dive. You put her nose down and let her go, and boy, how she goes. The devils start driving nails through your eardrums, and your lungs start screaming for air. And your body goes through a ringer, and then all of a sudden your brain explodes, and everything goes out like a light. Then you start hoping and praying that you'll come out alive, and level off and not stack up like poor little Johnny Cole. You think you can take that? Get in the front cockpit. All right, you bullheaded little brat. I'll fly your test for you. But remember one thing. I'm going to give you a flight like you've never had in your life. Get in. I give the order flight. OK.
see that baby climb? She got off swell, Professor. Pilot refuses to execute the order for a 9G power dive. Says she won't take it. Professor Blake, can your ship stand a 9G pull-up? I'm sure it will. Give me that microphone. Test pilot Farrell, Colonel Ryan talking. You will follow Engineer Farrell's instructions for a 9G pull-out. I'll bring that plane down immediately. No, wait a minute, Colonel. Yet. 
Colonel Ryan says to come on in. Great work, Brad. Colonel Ryan says to bring in the ship. She's all yours, kid. Safe as a baby in a crib. 
Bradley Farrell, Vice President. Well, are you happy, Mrs. Farrell? Delirious. Say, I'm the guy you married, remember? Oh, yes, a kiss for you. <laughs> well, come on in. The place isn't haunted. Oh, gee, this is swell, Mac. Oh, go on, sit down. You'll do all your flying from that cockpit from now on. Well, it doesn't look very dangerous. <laughs> Good old squid. <laughs> 